Hello, I'm Chris. You might remember me from the transfer learning video. Uh, well, I'm back and I'm super excited because in most of the videos up until this point, we haven't actually deployed a model. But today, we're going to build a model from scratch and deploy it into a web browser where we can actually use it. And this model is especially cool because it is going to be able to detect emotion. So we're actually making something that could be useful. I personally sometimes struggle knowing how I feel. But now, finally, a machine can tell me with a high degree of accuracy exactly what my feelings are. So let's dig into it. So inside the emotion classifier directory of uh, videos in the ML class project, uh, you can see train.py. Train.py is a pretty simple script. We're pulling in a couple Keras layers, setting up some configuration parameters. And then we have this custom callback, which is going to tell us how long uh, the model is actually taking to perform inference. So we can do some performance monitoring, as well as uh, monitoring on the metrics that we're trying to measure. Uh, this function simply loads the data, which in this case, the data is black and white images. Uh, of people making seven different emotions. Here we load the data, we normalize it, and currently we have a really simple perceptron that is simply outputting seven different numbers, which will be the probabilities of the emotions anger, disgust, fear, happiness, sad, surprise, and neutral. Finally, after we finish training, we're going to save our model so that we can use it later and deploy it to the web. So let's go ahead and run train.py. It takes a second to load the data, but we can watch live progress in the Weights and Biases interface. So for this model, let's go ahead and dig in and actually look at some of the predictions that are coming out of it. And we can zoom here to see these expressions a little better. Uh, here, happy, that seems right. Happy, this looks more angry, but that's, that's difficult. Neutral, happy, it seems to be skewing towards happy. This is correct, sad. Um, so our, our actual validation accuracy isn't that great right now. We're getting uh, the correct emotion about 35% of the time. So the first thing I wanted to do was actually improve this model a bit. Uh, but this is kind of a, an endless exercise that I'd love for you all to explore and try a number of different techniques to get the accuracy of this model up before we actually deploy it. So the first thing I would do is add some convolutional layers. So here, let's go ahead and input import our COM2D layer. And we can also import our max pooling 2D layers. Now, instead of flattening the data, we can actually take the data and input it directly into a COM2D layer. Now, the number of filters we want here is fairly arbitrary, but let's go ahead and choose 32. And we'll just use a 3 by 3 kernel. And we want an activation function. So let's use ReLU. Now we can go ahead and add our max pooling so that the network can learn across spatial dimensions. And by default, this is just going to be a 2 by 2 pool. And here, let's add another convolution layer. Because we're working with half the amount of data as we were before because of the pooling, we can likely afford to do twice as many convolutions as we did earlier. Now finally, before we go into our dense, we should flatten. And we may as well add one more hidden layer to increase the expressibility of the model. Great, so with just a few lines, hopefully we've dramatically increased the performance of our model. And there's a whole bunch of other things we could do here, but uh, I'll leave it for you guys to check out some of our other videos around more advanced techniques on computer vision and classification. OK, so we can see that this new model is taking much longer to train because we're doing far more operations within the network. But that additional complexity has actually gotten us quite a bit of accuracy. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at this new model. Here we can see after a single epic, we're already uh, almost up to 50% accuracy, which sounds good to me. And just looking at some of the examples, it seems like we're definitely making a more accurate model. So we've created a model that definitely gets higher accuracy, but that additional complexity has come at a cost. We can see here, looking at our accuracy curves, that our validation accuracy is, has actually plateaued, while our accuracy is continuing to improve, which is a real clear indicator of overfitting. So the first thing I would try would be to add dropout. Uh, and the next would be to check out our video on data augmentation and create more training data so that the model can't memorize any individual specific examples. But I think this model is good enough to create a cool deployment. So let's go ahead and look at what that looks like. So inside the emotion classifier directory, I have a couple helper scripts here. So the first one is convert.sh. Let's go ahead and just look and see what's inside of that. So convert.sh is just a simple bash script that's calling TensorFlow.js converter. And this is something that gets installed with the TensorFlow.js uh, Python library. And here we're telling it that we're going to give it a Keras model, and we want it to do quantization. So the, the quantization is going to actually decrease the amount of bytes that we're going to express each of our weights and biases in the network from four down to two. So it should make the model about half the size as it would be if we used full 32-bit floating point numbers. And I'm having it put the uh, generated TensorFlow.js model into app slash models, which is inside of app is a little web application that I made, which we're going to use to actually uh, watch the, the model perform inference in real time. So let's go ahead and run convert.sh. Cool, so it says we converted the model. Now we can run uh, serve.sh. So let's just look at serve real quick. So serve is pretty simple. It's going to CD into app and start a simple Python HTTP server. And then we're using a service called servio.net to actually um, SSH tunnel into this machine and give us a unique URL that we can access the application with. OK, so let's go ahead and run serve.sh. Cool, so you can see in the output that uh, we're now forwarding all HTTP traffic to this URL at servio.net. So we can copy that URL and open it in our browser. And now this is actually a web server that's talking to our local machine. And oh, you can see Lucas and I here. So um, it's only going to grab the first face. So I think it's whoever face is closest. <laughs> uh, we can hit predict once, which is going to grab a frame, and then uh, crop around just our faces, make it uh, grayscale, and then put it through our actual classifier. So here we can see that it took uh, about 20 milliseconds to perform inference. And it thinks that I'm angry with a 32% confidence. Uh, what's really fun with this, this application is we can actually stream the predictions. So if I start streaming, um, now it's going to be predicting uh, what my emotions are while I talk. And it looks like it's going to flip between Lucas and I <laughs> randomly as well. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can get it happy. Ah, it was there for a second. It's really favoring angry. Luke, you want to get in there? Let me try. Let me try to get up. Yeah, look, it works for me. Happy. Yeah, it doesn't like my beards. I don't think we had. I don't think we had that many beards in the in the training data. Mm. So as you can clearly see, making a model like this makes me very happy, and the model is actually able to detect that. Although it seems to be bouncing back and forth between sad and. OK, maybe the model is just a little confused about my beard. But with some more training data and maybe some dropout, I think I could get it right for sure. So all of this code is freely available within a repository. And it's a great starting point uh, to play with emotion detection. Um, I love this use case especially because I can imagine a lot of fun things we could do with this. 
right? Now we have this emotion classifier running in the background in our browser, and maybe if it starts to detect that we're getting a little frustrated or angry, it could prompt us to step back, check in, and uh, hopefully feel better. We'd love to see what you guys do with it, and uh, we encourage you to, to write it in the comments and send us screenshots of the stuff you can do with this real-time uh, emotion detection model.